Wait, oh, what was my catch <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Unapologetically OG with me, of course, telling you how I feel about things unapologetically. This channel or this podcast is mainly about um, self-improvement, elevation, so anything that we can think about that can help curb the mindset and help elevate you spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and financially, this is what we're going to be discussing. So today I do have a guest, Mr. Chris Ford. <laughs> And you see the topic for today, which is um, the seven African powers. So me and Chris, we've been knowing each other for a few years. We did business together. And, you know, lately, since we both kind of been on a spiritual journey, we really, you know, vibe and we could talk forever when it comes to all matters of, you know, spirituality and higher thinking. So we just wanted to come here today and really just have an open discussion when it comes to the seven African powers or African spirituality or, you know, a change in lifestyle or way of living when it comes to um, a different culture. So, yeah, we just want to go ahead and vibe when it comes to that. Now, we do have a book that both of us have that, you know, if you guys want to reference it, <laughs> put your book over here. Too. I would definitely <laughs> recommend getting one. If yeah. you know about the Risha's or want to know more about how you can connect with their research that has some great information in it. Right, and we grabbed it off of Amazon so anybody can get it. This is just something that we both can kind of reference together. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Awesome, awesome. So um, just to let everyone know, uh, when you're talking about African spirituality, a lot of times if you do have an agenda to go on and if spirit is amongst you, sometimes spirit may guide you to go a different way so we're going to start off talking about the seven african powers but uh keep in mind that you know of course spirit we're guided by spirit and and whatever comes up we may go a different route than talking about this so uh yeah so let's get into it so what are the seven african powers of the orishas so if you know who the orishas are and you may be you know, initiated in as as a child of one of the Orishas, you know, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how you communicate with them, uh, how you can get in tune with them, how you can, as the words say, conjure them up, you know, or basically just make that connection with them, whether it is through meditation, whether it's through prayer, whether it's through ceremonies. You do want to know what you're doing and who you connect with and contact before you can connect and contact any Orisha, right? And so what I mean by that is we're going to get into, you know, what deities you go through first before you can contact any Orisha. So. Absolutely. Well, I do want to kind of jump back to what you said about what are the seven African, um, seven African powers and kind of just give them like a textbook definition. That way everybody's kind of on the same page when we get started. So from the book so you guys can have something to reference um it basically says the seven african powers are called upon for overcoming obstacles help with spiritual change and encouragement encouragement of personal power any individual can call upon the seven african powers bearing in mind that they are they are spirit guides and anybody whether they are initiated or not can have contact with spirits of the deceased for their direction now, just a little background, the belief is, you know, you have your creator God, of course, the um, highest power, the highest being, whatever you want to call it. And then you have the Orisha, which will kind of be equivalent to um, angels. So the thought process is we as people, we go to the Orishas, you know, for different things that we need help with versus going to God. It's kind of like the same concept of Jesus. You know, you go to Jesus to get to God. So it's the same concept. Only difference is you have different energies that govern different things. So depending on what you need, that's the Orisha that's going to correspond to what you want to go to. Just for example, um, one of the most popular Orisha that a lot of people know about is Oshun. Oshun's color is yellow and she more so is for, you know, self-love. Um, she more so... <laughs> resides in the river so if you want to you know give offerings to her if you want to work with her 
you will give her things she likes, such as honey. She likes, you know, flowers, such as sunflowers. Um, and the little story is you actually have to taste the honey before you give it to her as an offering because she was poisoned before with, with honey. So it's just a lot of different things. If you want to work on your self-love and confidence, I remember working with Oshun a few years ago when I really went through that period of, um, I don't want to say depression. I don't want to give it a name, but I was just at a low point and I was just staying stuck in that same mindset of staying in that energy and kind of, you know, wasn't working on myself, wasn't keeping myself up. So what I had to do was actually, you know, work with that energy of Oshun of finding that self-love and, you know, that inner beauty. And, you know, you can do that by just wearing her color, wearing yellow. I did start wearing yellow for a while. Just everything I was drawn to it. I'm like, ooh, a yellow shirt. Ooh, a yellow dress. Ooh, this is pretty. Like, let me just put yellow on. Oh, yeah, and he did show... um their version of what Oshun would look like, you know, but if she know, whatever you want her to look like, but just know she got to have yellow on. <laughs> Anything you wanted to add about um, Oshun? Sure. Uh, guys, you got to keep this in mind that we are talking about African spiritual entities, right. right? So to my knowledge and from what I've learned, these are not people that existed at one time. Um, they are principles, right? They're principles of uh, higher consciousness, which means that Miss OG can be Oshun. You know, the, the spirit of Oshun can, I wouldn't say be invoked in her, but she can resonate to the consciousness and, and, and the spirit of Oshun can commune with her. So some of her uh, um, some of her inner abilities to attract men, to seduce men, to sway men, or whatever I you know, know what all this means. it can. <laughs> so she she can take on those attributes. She can take on those abilities, and because she uh, resonated with Oshun on a higher spiritual consciousness level then Oshun can work through her, mm -hmm. right? To bring her whatever it is that she desire or wish to do. So keep in mind when we talk about these uh, African spiritual rishas that they're not actual physical beings that existed hundreds or thousands of years ago. They're actually principles, just like Jesus Christ would be a principle of how you act, of, of how you live a Christian life it's a principle, right? It, these are attributes of what you take on. And because you connect with the spiritual entity, the spiritual entity can work through you to bring you to bring about a certain thing. We call that magic, right? So uh, I want to go a little bit into real quick about how during slavery times, how the slave master, they would give you Jesus, right? They would tell you, they would explain what Jesus looked like, uh, who he was. They would give you a Bible and have you to read the Bible. And they would have someone, uh, uh, someone that they taught how to read or someone they taught how to inspire other, other slaves, right? They would be the preacher. They would be the one that would bring the word, right? So uh, a lot of times, uh, uh, our African ancestors that they were practicing, you know, uh, their African spirituality and they had to depress, you know, who they, who they were, who they connected to. Uh, I know on my father's side, they connected with spirits. They can see spirits. They can see, you know, see spirits and communicate with spirits as well as I am, you know, I have that ability as well to connect with spirits, to connect with my ancestors that passed, that passed on. You know, when you, there was something I kind of want to go back to when you mentioned slavery and, you know, working with mm -hmm. the um, ancestors and things like that. And I just kind of want to point out that's where, you know, Santeria came about. Absolutely. Masking, you know, the um, different deities, the African deities with Catholic deities. Right. You know, you have each Orisha is going to correspond go. with a Catholic saint, which right. I thought was really, really interesting that, you know, at some point, our ancestors were still practicing, you know, the religion and still practicing the culture, but they just 
had to pretend it was, you know, St. Andrew versus working with, you know, Elegba. Exactly. So, so that that's a good point because yeah. that's what they did. They masked these, the, the deities that they were practicing African spiritualism, the, the deities and the spirits that they connected to to bring about power, to bring about a, a new higher consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. when, when our ancestors went into slavery, all of that was taken away. They was told not to talk about it or not to practice your African spiritualism. Here's religion, right? And so what some of our ancestors did was they masked they mass the the power and the energies and the and the uh, the African spiritual deities that they acknowledged that they went to whenever they was in times of uh, tribulations and they needed help and assistance and power. Mm -hmm. They had to suppress those deities and take on Jesus Christ and take on you know uh, uh, they the Lord and you know so all of these other terms they just mask mm -hmm. and through. Uh, as O.G. Barnes said, through these Catholic entities, you know, the these Saint Germains or Saint or Saint John or whoever, mm -hmm. you know, so they still had that in mind. They never lost concept of who they were. Right. They just had to do what they had to do for, you know, to not get beat to death or to not, you know, uh, uh, suffer punishment because they were saying the names of these gods and deities that that help them and assist them along the way. Right, absolutely. Now you definitely make some great points there. We kind of want to get maybe just a tad bit more personal with this. So, absolutely. then that we're talking about the seven African powers, when were you first introduced to, you know, the Aruba um, religion or culture? When were you first introduced like to the Orishas? Like how did the Orishas, did they come to you personally? Did somebody else introduce the information? Like what was your personal experience? So uh, ever since I was 18, I, that's when I call my awakening point. Mm -hmm. That's whenever my DNA explosion went off and I no longer accepted religion as a part of my way of life. Okay. I started seeking higher consciousness. I started seeking spirituality because I knew it was always something more. Mm -hmm. I just, even as a young child, I felt like, I felt different. I felt alone in a world. I felt even though you have religion and people commun you know, uh, communing at the church and they're communing with each other, I just felt lost. I just felt like this is not me. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's got to be something more to it than this. It's, it's, I see people playing church, people playing spiritual, but mm -hmm. they have no real power. They have no real concept of, of help mm -hmm. to draw help to them to draw assistance to them. And I always had that concept in the back of my mind. And uh, as I learned, you know, me, I'm actually a New Wapian, you know, learning mm -hmm. from Dr. Malachi Z. York, okay. uh, my spiritual guide, uh, one of my spirit guides guys, here, right? physical <laughs> spirit guides, and will always be. That's where, you know, you're talking about from the age of 18 up to now. So I've seen a lot of things that people haven't seen. I've seen... Right. I've experienced things that people haven't experienced. I'm way beyond my age when it comes to wisdom, mm -hmm. when it comes to spirituality, because I had to grow up through this, you know. And so dealing with the Arishas, this is something that I came about literally less than two years ago. Okay. Um, however, I'm not a child of the Arishas, and I, I wish not to be. But I had to. That so you're was a not school. Get initiated? Absolutely not. Really? Why not? Absolutely not. I feel like when you have to be initiated into mm -hmm. something that already is mm -hmm. something that <laughs> that you're already in contact with, something right. that you're already, as I said, that these African reaches, they're nothing but attributes and and principalities mm -hmm. of higher consciousness. Right. Because I have the ability to communicate with spirits and deities and, and, and so on and so forth, I connect with them that way. And, and being that I connect with them that way, uh, being a clear audience and, and touches of clairvoyance at times, I feel that uh, we, we actually have the power that they have. 
okay. which means that spiritually you connect with them, mm -hmm. right? As a physical human being, but realize that we are spirits having a human having a physical human experience. Mm -hmm. So I am in this body, but I am not this body. Right. Right. This is the body that I incarnated into at this time to bring about certain information, certain teachings to allow the information to flow through me as a vessel, as a vehicle that I'm using this body to produce a physical, a physical power, a physical uh, uh, manifestation. Because that's what we are. We are aspects of the spirits of the Most High, having a physical experience to bring about power in this earth and to teach others. So I don't feel that initiation to me is needed because I'm doing the things that people that are getting initiated. And then, too, I see people that are initiated and I communicate with them and they're basically turning this African spirituality into a religion. And it's about money. So I feel like I'm staying away from that because I know better. Right. I know better. If I want yeah. if I want to to uh, get in tune and, and, and connect myself to Oshun or Ogun, you know, then I know the direct path and the way to do that. Right. You know, and people have to find their own way, their own path. But. To you know, and I'm not stepping on anybody toes that decides to get initiated. You know, right. if that's what route you choose to go, that that's what route you choose to go. I've always been taught from an early age, being a Nuwapian, learning the different schools of religion, learning the different schools of spirituality, that you don't step on anybody's toes because that's the path that they choose to go, mm -hmm. and you never know where they're gonna end up at. Right. Right. Because that's just the path that they're learning. That's where they are now. So you learn to respect where people are mm -hmm. on their journey. I see. No, so. I was just talking about that earlier. We were in the clubhouse room and it was like spirituality versus religion. And the girl right. was like, my family, I just, I'm like, you got to chill. Like, let the people live their life. You live yours. Right. Do what works for you. But don't push your views and project, you know, project your anger and your trauma onto people. I think that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I think spirituality really taught me that. So just have more compassion for people. Because, of course, you know, when we get on this journey, we like little angry birds. We just want to preach to everybody. Everybody come join over here. <laughs> this is what's wrong with what you think. And this is what's wrong with what you're doing. Right. And then there's no difference because we're all just tearing each other down. When you really get to that point where you're elevating your consciousness, you learn to respect people's frequency. Like... I may be on a frequency six and you're on a two, but that's okay. Like, I don't have to beat you down. Right. You know what I'm saying? Believe what you believe and that's cool. Absolutely. And, so, yeah. And, and if you need more assistance and guidance on the way, mm -hmm. we're here for you, but we're not going to use this as religion and bash you with it. Put, you know, hit you over the head. You, you got to believe. You got to believe. This is the truth. Mm -hmm. This is the facts. No. Allow them to be them. Allow them to come into who they are at the time that they're going to come into it. Because before the age of 18, I probably wouldn't have had a, a, uh, an awakening, a mm -hmm. DNA explosion that allowed me to uh, uh, connect with spirit before that time. That was right. my time to awaken. That was my time to be aware. As most people say, the woke, you know, <laughs> and, and, and most people... They they trip me out. They say, uh, oh, you know, I'm woke and this and that. Oh, and it's they they're turning woke you know into that. something that is like a cliche. It's, you know what's it's so like crazy it's, though? it's popular to be woke. Everybody wanna be woke, but what everybody is missing is shadow work. Nobody is working on themselves. Absolutely. You can't be woke because you sit on here and watching freaking Illuminati videos on YouTube and you think you know what's going on with the shadow government. When well, you're not doing shadow work on yourself, like do you know who you are? Absolutely. Like, do you know your purpose? Like, what are you here to do? Like, yeah. what do you mean? Why are you still so angry? To my, oh, I've been on this woke shit since I was like, you know, 15. But you still like being ignorant. Like, you're not changing with the information that you're gathering. So it's pointless. Yeah, absolutely. The point is for us to learn the information, elevating consciousness. People around you are going to naturally gravitate towards you if it's, if it's for them to elevate. Mm -hmm. And the people that's not are going to repel against you. But if you're still doing the same shit, like, you're stuck. Like, what's <laughs> yeah. the point? 
Yeah, you got to take this information and you got to internalize it. You got to apply it to your life and you got to resonate on it wherever you are. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have to go fast. You can go as slow as you want to. You can you can go as fast as you want to. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that you must understand is you got to do the inner work yourself. You got to do the prayers yourself. You got to do the meditation yourself. You got to do the rituals yourself to Listen. bring about an, an empowerment, right? Because that's what it's about. That's it. It's about empowering yourself. Mm -hmm. Empowering yourself that you know that you, at any time that you need assistance, mm -hmm. you can call upon your, your spiritual guides, <laughs> your, your guardian angels, your ancestors, your deities, and get quick responses right away. And you don't have to wait for nobody else to do it for you. Right. And, and if, in, even if it doesn't come right away, right, uh, you got to realize everything comes within time. Everything comes within its own time. Uh, you know, I, I communicate with spirits. I hear spirits. And sometimes I want to always see spirits. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that doesn't happen. You know, sometimes if it's meant to be, if they come, if they come to me in a dream or if they come to me while I'm meditating, they may show a shadow mm -hmm. or a a glimpse of themselves, but it won't be clear how I want to see it. It won't be like me and OG Barnes sitting side to side and I can see her face clear as day mm -hmm. and see everything. And sometimes it's frustrating <laughs> Whenever you're able to hear the spirits and connect with spirits, but you don't see the physical aspect of them. If if you have people out there that's clear audience and understand what I'm talking about, then you, you understand <laughs> what I mean. But, you know, you have to let this take its own course. Now, you know, it sucks even more when it's just an internal, when you get to that point where you're not hearing any voices or seeing anything. It's just like an inner knowing and you're always Absolutely. fighting back and forth. You're like... Is it me or is it something else? Yeah. <laughs> well, something making me feel like I need to go do this, but this don't make no damn sense. Like, where did right. it come from? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I hear I hear a lot of people say, well, you know, what are y'all talking about? I heard the Orishas is, uh, you know, that's, that's oh, voodoo. Gosh. That's they what people practice. That's what blah, the blah, Haitians blah, blah. practice and this and that. So understand that voodoo is a study of ecology and the study of nature. That's it. Right? It's the study of nature. It's because anytime you hear someone talk about the Rishas, you're, you're hearing them talk about uh, different aspects like Oshun resides in the oceans or near water. Uh, but you know what? We got to keep it a bug. Everybody's hearing the negative side. They're right, hearing about right. the hexing. They're hearing about the different spells. You know, they're hearing about the bad stuff that comes with it. And people have to understand that everything is neutral and it's filled by intention. So I feel like voodoo is neutral. Santeria is neutral. Ifa is neutral. But if I get into it with bad intentions, that's what makes it bad. The people and your intention is not the actual thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? I can practice voodoo. And I can decide to hex people all day. But for me, that's something that I just do not dabble in. I don't, you know, I follow that one major rule. Do not transgress on other people's free will. I let them do what they do. Even if you do something to me, I know my ancestors are going to hop on your ass. And I don't have to do anything. So I just sit back and chill. I'll be like, okay, listen, <laughs> you ready for this pressure? Because <laughs> I'm not going to do, I'm not about to lift a finger. Right. But, you know, some people do that. Anytime somebody make them upset, they're like, oh, I'm going to put you in a coffin. I'm going to put you in a this. I'm going to do a spell. And it's a me that just show you weak. So and, that's all. And then also what I, you know, because I, I communicate with a lot of conscious uh, people in the community, mm -hmm. whether they, whether it be, um, they are into uh, voodoo or voodoo or even hoodoo or or just practicing their African spiritualism the best way that they know. Mm -hmm. um, realize this, that when you have people that say, oh, I'm going to put a spell on you or I'm going to curse you and this and that. Well, guess what? They, they, have, they have ancestors too, right? Mm -hmm. They have spirit guides too. So as long as they are in communication with their spirit guides and know their spirit guides and guardian and, and, and ancestors are protecting them, then, you know, really you can only do so much that they will allow you to do. Now, if that person don't believe in, in that, or they do believe in it and they're spooked and they're scared, then yeah, you probably could have some, some ability over them to scare them or to hex them or whatever. But 
hey, you know, we, we got spirit guides, we got guardian angels, we got ancestors just like you do, and they go to bat for us. So, you know, w with all that, you know, <laughs> with all that, I'm gonna put a spell on you, a hex on you, a curse on you. You know, that, that don't work for everybody. And they don't understand how magic works because you're going to have to pay your debt back too. All right. You're asking them to intervene. Because it will come back to you. Absolutely.